Shanti. <laughs> Hello, my name is Shiva Eichermann, and today I will be reading the heaven story of Malga. I really like the illustration on this one. That's true. Let it's it show it, it's really cute. Uh. Let us begin. Most people see dragons as majestic, fire-breathing, wise, fictional creatures. Coming and spanning over many religions, decades, and arguably being real. But in my mind and in reality, there is no doubt that dragons exist. Maybe not in the way that we see them, but they do. And they may have lived exactly as they are portrayed in movies, but so long ago that there's no one to remember it anymore. They'd have to be immortal for that. And people either see dragons as wise, gentle, yet powerful creatures, or evil, cruel, and dangerous ones who care about nothing but hoarding. But I don't think either of those are good portrayals of a dragon. Dragons are much like humans are. They're quirky, they're, they vary from dragon to dragon, and their personalities aren't a very general span over them. And some dragons are actually quite cute and funny. And they, they're also very, they're all very wise dragons, but some are a little clum clumsier than others are. And those clumsy, cute, goofy dragons are also the ones that tend to be the most in touch with their love. They, they see things and even if it confuses them, they always love it with all of their heart. They aren't very judgmental creatures. Finding a judgmental, clumsy, cute dragon is very hard. And of course there's the exceptions, but there's an exception to every rule. And these dragons that are so full of love and acceptance, well, they have a very important job, you see. And that common job or thing they have to get done is simply to spread their love. And it sounds simple, but it's a lot harder than you might think because a lot of people are very closed off to love, or at least accepting love that doesn't discriminate against people based on the things that people discriminate about. I don't know the way I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you get the point. We, we, you get the point. You're a smart person. And they kind of have to offer their flower of love to people, and even if people reject it, they'll have to find a way to touch their heart somehow because the they with them there aren't any exceptions there aren't these people that they aren't meant to love these dragons are meant to touch and love every single person everyone their fellow dragons angels humans i mean gods anything anyone it's their job to love them and give all of their love to them. Even if that person is the most racist, homophobic, judgmental, cockroach of a person. Donald Trump. <coughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm kidding. You. They have to find a way to love them from where they are. They have to find a way to spread that to them and to just expand their love and wrap it around the world in this huge embrace. And Maga, you are one of these dragons. You are so endlessly full of love and you have to share it with everybody. This isn't a choice, this isn't an option of, oh, maybe this person doesn't need it for me. There's literally no exception. 
And I said there are exceptions to every rule, but here there aren't. That's an exception to the rule, actually. <laughs> it's a paradox. You have to share this endless, boundless joy and love you have with everyone you meet, everybody who is lacking in this love, everybody who is lacking in this joy for life, real life, you have to find a way that you can touch them, even in a way that they may not realize you've done so. You have to share your flower with people so that they, in turn, can spread their love. It's a chain reaction that will make the world a much better place. Questions, comments, concerns. That's very beautiful. And kind of hilarious. Very happy, very happy, funny, touching. Let me see what question do I have. So, I have also a happy, goofy question. How can a dragon live a human's body this lifetime? How do they do it? <laughs> That's an adorable question, honestly, <laughs> but the answer is they don't really. When a dragon becomes human, it's more like a puppeteer, honestly. A dragon's being is too large to fit into a human body. Like, the fact that even gods can fit into human bodies is impressive, but then again, gods also physically tend to be human-sized in their portrayals, which definitely helps. Dragons, on the other hand, generally portray are portrayed as like hundreds of times bigger than the average human, or even a large human. So, of course, a dragon more controls the body, like a puppeteer, like I already said. They're always kind of outside of the body, yet they're connected spiritually in a way that however the dragon moves, the human body moves. And as strange as that is, it's actually quite a touching connection that the dragon has to the human soul. Because it, the dragon feels so much love and connection to it, that it would work so hard to keep it alive. And that it, it doesn't even, it's not even aware that it's controlling itself. It's just so connected, it's like they're one being. And they are one being. It's like an extension of the dragon. And I have another question. That might seem, might seem strange. Probably important though. But it's a question that comes up. When a dragon is happy, how does that affect the world? It's actually a really wonderful thing when a dragon is truly happy. When a, when a dragon is truly so happy, you know that, you know when you get like so overflowed with joy you don't know what to do with yourself? Maybe you haven't seen a friend, your best friend in forever and an analogy that fits with me right now and you finally get to see them and you're so happy and you just don't know where to go anymore. When you are that happy as a dragon, it's kind of like good things just happen in the world. I've noticed like sometimes there are just huge bouts of super great events happening after one another. You know, like heroic people saving others' lives or wars ending or something like that or good or like gay marriage being legalized, for example. And things like that and if a dragon is furious or mad like it's like the total opposite of that overflowing joy it's when you're so angry or upset you just kind of want to break everything around you and rip it apart that's where strings of terrible events happen you know the wars in syria horrible tragedies giant earthquakes mass shootings and dragons pretty much control those things because of their moods, which is why it's very important for dragons to try and control themselves. Or keep their emotions within their little perimeter of a body. And I don't mean bottle up your feelings, that's unhealthy. I mean they need to learn to not let it explode onto the world because it's like poison. It's either antidote or poison. Because it'll either ruin people's lives or make their day. So again, it's very important for a dragon to learn to control that because they have a huge influence over the horrible crap that happens in the world or the amazing crap that happens in the world. Okay, and I have another question. I don't mind. <clears throat> you know what ley lines are? In Chinese feng shui, they're also called dragon lines. These, these energy lines that, that are like a grid, crisscross grid going across the planet. How are dragons connected to these lines? 
dragons pretty much move along them. Like a dra like a dragon without a human body, I mean. Like dragons that haven't chosen to be incarnated yet. And thank god because we're already overpopulating as it is. <laughs> They move along those ley lines. That's how they get from place to place. It's basically their transportation. They can't really fly over the planet anymore because the people would be a little more than a little shocked to see like a dragon flying along. So they use the ley lines to move so that they can stay on the spiritual plane and people won't freak the hell out. It's kind of a way for them to move quickly from place to place and for them to also keep themselves hidden until they're ready to incarnate or until they've completed their mission in the spiritual world and can move to the mortal realm. Okay, I think these were all questions that I could, could find. Great. Thank you. You're welcome.